So, I've been doing stuff with Lagrange points, and I made a mistake. And the mistake was that I, well, it's not a mistake. I used the case where the one object, like the sun, was much more massive than the other one. And I don't want to make a better model for that. So I want to be able to do like Jupiter and the sun, where the, where the sun actually moves also, uh, or binary stars. And so the first thing I need to do is to get a system set up where I can model a binary star system in a circular orbit. So let's find out the initial conditions for a binary star system of mass m1 and m2 separated by a distance capital R uh, such that they move in a circle. So the first thing is where is the location of these things? I want to put, I want really want two things. I want three things. I want circular orbits, circular orbits. I want um, the, as a vector technically it'd be r center of mass equals the zero vector. So I want the center mass of the system at the origin and I want p total, the total momentum to be zero. So I don't want the, I don't want the whole thing moving up and down. And so I need to find out the location of these, I pick these as scalar values, r1 and r2, along the x-axis. Once I get that, and then I can find the velocity of both of these, and then I can model the whole thing, and I'm going to do that in Python. Okay, so let's start off with the center mass. So the center mass of the system in the, in the x direction, uh, x center mass, is, I want it to be zero, and that's going to be uh, this mass right here, so this is going to be m2, r2, and then plus that one, which is actually in the negative x direction. So I'm going to say negative m1, r1. I'm, remember, I'm saying r1 is a, is a positive value and r2 is a positive value. But I have to add up those two to be 0 over the total mass, m1 plus m2. So then I can multiply both sides by m1 and m2. And I get, uh, let me, I get, I'll put it right here, m2, r2 equals m1, r1. That's true. Now, the other thing that I know is that r is going to be equal to r1 plus r2. Remember, that's the scalar distance. I shouldn't do this this way. I should deal with it as vectors, but I'm, I'm saying that's in the negative x direction. It's going to be all fine in the end. Trust me on this. I, I trust myself, which I could be wrong. Okay, so I know that's true too. So now I want to use these two to get an expression for, let's solve for r1. So I'm going to solve this for r1. I get r1 equals m2 r2 over m1. Now down here I can solve for r2. R, oops, r2 is going to be equal to r minus r1. If I plug that in up here I get m2 over m1 times r2 but I'm going to say it's r minus r1. Now I can multiply this out. I get r1 equals m2 r over m1 minus m2 r1 over m1. Add that to both sides and I get r1 plus m2 r1 over m1 equals m2 r over m1. Now I can factor out the r1. r1 times 1 plus m2 over m1 equals m2, that's a 2, r over m1. Now I can divide both sides by this and I get r1. So I'll put it down a little bit. So let's say r1 equals m2 r divided by all of this, but it's multiplied by m1. So m1 times 1 is m1. m1 times m2 over m1 is m2. And that's the scalar value of, the, of r1. That's how, where it's going to be. And notice if that mass 1 is much larger than mass 2, then uh, R1 is going to be smaller than R2, which I haven't solved for yet. But if I did the exact same thing, I could get R2 is going to be equal to M1R over M1 plus M2. They're, they're the same, right? It's the same thing that's going to do. So now I have the position of those two masses. If you want to check, I can multiply these two by their, by, I can, if I multiply this by uh, m1, then I get m1r over m1 plus m2. If I multiply this by m2, I get the same thing, and so they, they have to be equal. And that's what I said up here, right? Okay, so now I know the location of those two. Next, I need to find their velocities. 
So what I want to happen is to have, here's my origin. That's where the center mass is. Here's mass one. I'm assuming it's larger just for fun. And that's mass two. So this one's gonna move in a circular orbit about the center mass. And I'll give it a velocity V1, that's M1. And this one's gonna move in a circular path, but it's gonna go this way uh, with a velocity V2. And I already know this is uh, R1 and that's R2. Now, the key is to find uh, V1 and V2. So the first thing I know is if momentum is conserved, then uh, P total is gonna be equal. I'm doing this as a scalar, right? Um, so I would say, I mean, I guess this is in the positive Y direction. So I could say M1 V1 minus M2 V2 equals zero or M1 V1 equals M2 V2. They have to have the same momentum uh, of the star. So they have different mass, they're gonna have different velocities. They have to have different velocities. Okay, now let's go back to mass one. Uh, and let's just draw a diagram for it. I should've, I did this poorly. But here's the center mass. Here's M2. Here's M1. And this is R1 and this is R. So this is moving in a circle. If it's moving in a circle, then it's accelerating. And the acceleration would be centripetal acceleration is V1 squared over R1, right? This, that's an R. And then centripetal acceleration is velocity squared over, over the radius, and this is moving in a radius of R1. What force causes that to move in a circle is the gravitational force from M2. And so the gravitational force depends on the distance squared, right? So, but the distance is R. So if I put this together and say F net X equals M A X at that instant, the acceleration is that way, the force is that way. So I get uh, G M1 M2 over R squared. That's the gravitational force. It depends on big, the distance between these. But the acceleration is M1 V1 squared over R1. Now, when we talk about normal circular orbits, these two would be both the same R, but they're not in this case because it's not a simple circular motion. But I can still solve for V1. So the M1s cancel. And if I solve for V1, I get V1 squared. It's going to be, I multiply both sides by R1, is G M2 R1 over R squared. And then I can say V1 is the square root of G M2 R1 over R squared. Now what about uh, V2? Well, up here I can solve for V2, and I can say V2 equals M, that's put a box around that, M1 V1 over M2. And then if I put this in, I get M1 over M2, square root of G M2 R1 over R squared. Um, you could do it the other way and get a, an expression for V2 doing the same thing. It should be the same thing. V2 is also equal to the square root of G M1 R1 over R squared. And I think those are the same values, but I'm not 100% sure, but I'm going to do it in Python and we'll know for sure. Okay, so now we're going to make this model in Python uh, because at the, at, after this, not in this video, I want to like find this, uh, these Lagrange points and model them. They're all, there's five of them and show that they actually stay in stationary places for extreme cases where I have, you know, a, a star and another star and this is twice the mass of that one or something fun like that. Fun. Fun is the key there. we got to do fun. Okay. So let's switch over to Python and get this thing running. Now, surprise, I already started because I, I already I had to pick some values uh, for uh, the masses and the and the radiuses and stuff like that stuff that I know that would possibly work. Um, so let's see. I'm trying to think what my I can't remember what I picked for my time interval. Oh, let's see. I think a thousand seconds. Okay, so. Now, where'd I go? 
I was just checking. Okay, so let's just go ahead with those values. Let's just print out uh, R1, R2, uh, and I'm going to call it RS1 for the scalar value because I'm going to actually use, I think I'm probably going to use, um, I don't think I have to, let's, let's just do it R1. R1, and now I'm just looking at my equations right here. Where'd it go? I said R1 is equal to M2 times R divided by M1 plus M2. Uh, R2 is M1 times R divided by M1 plus M2. Now, I picked a value, right? The mass of one is twice the mass of the other one. So I, it should be like easy numbers to, to deal with. Let's just print uh, R1 equals R1. And then let's do R1 divided by R, right? Yeah. Uh, and let's say, uh, I guess I should say this. I mean, I don't want it wrong, right? Print uh, R2 over R is equal to R2 over R. And let's run that. Okay, so that, that works, right? Because now if you add these two values together, you get one, and it shows that R1 is much closer to the origin than R2. It seems to be working. Okay, now let's calculate the velocities. Uh, I'm just going to type in my equation. V1 equals uh, the square root of G times M2 times R1 divided by R squared. And then V2 is equal to, and these are just the scalar values. Um, let's use the other version. Let's do it, let's do it two ways. Uh, so it's the same thing as this. But I'm going to change this to M1. R2. And then I'm going to do it uh, V2, 2, which is the second way to do it, which is uh, M1 times V1 divided by M2. And let's print all these. So let's print, I'm just going to print V1, uh, print V2, oops, print V2, 2. Now, if V2, 2 and V2 are not the same, I'm going to be a little, a little upset. But, but they're the same. <laughs> okay. So, and this also says that uh, velocity of star one is not as much as star two because it's in a smaller circular orbit. That makes sense too. Uh, okay, now let's model this stuff. Uh, I don't need that. I don't need to print this stuff. Uh, let's make our stars. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is make star one, and these are stars. Uh, star 1 is a sphere. It has a position equal to vector uh, negative R1, 0, 0. Because now I'm, I'm starting on the negative x-axis, so I, R1 was just a scalar value, so I need to, to do that negative sign. Uh, the, so, the radius is going to be equal to, let's say, R. If I do, what if I did R divided by, what if I did, I want to make it bigger, but let's say, Let's just say R divided by 20, and let's make this one yellow. Color equals color dot yellow. And let's uh, do make trail equals true. Okay, and let's, I always like to run it just to make sure things are working. There's my star. Okay, now let's put the other one in there. Um, star two equals sphere. Position equals vector R two, zero, zero. Right, because that one's on the positive x-axis, and then the radius is going to be equal to r divided by 30. Color equals color dot cyan. I, I could do the, the radius such that they actually have the same density, but I'm, I don't want to do that. Uh, make trail equals true. So make trail, when it moves, it leaves a trail behind it. I think that might be obvious, but... And there's an error. No. Where's my thing? Oh, maybe... It, there it is. Okay, it's just, I, it, the screen was just kind of weird. Because it doesn't show the whole screen because I have to pull it over. There it is. Okay, that looks pretty good. Sizes are good. Okay. Now I need T equals 0. DT equals uh, 1,000. I already looked at that. 1,000 a thousand seconds per time step. Because you can't use a time step of 0 0.01 because these things are astronomical. They're going to be moving, taking, you know, months to orbit or something like that. Okay. So I'm going to say, let, let's say 
while t is less than, um, I'm just gonna say one times 10 to the fifth and we can change it, uh, rate a thousand. I'm just picking here I, and I haven't really thought this thing through. Uh, so the first thing I'm gonna do is calculate the vector, the vector r. The vector r I'm gonna define as a vector from the uh, star one to star two, and I'll use that to calculate my gravitational forces. So let's say r equals star, the final star two dot pos minus star one dot pos. So that's my, my vector. I don't know which way, was, I get my things backwards. Now I can calculate the gravitational force on star two. So f, I'm just gonna call it f, is gonna be equal to uh, g times, oh, I didn't put that, oh, I didn't put it. M1 times M2 times, no, it should be negative. Negative, because if the, the R vector is that way, the gravitational force is in the other way. Times the unit vector norm R divided by mag R. And this is different than the capital R, which is the initial distance. So now, oh, I need momentums. So up here, let's say star one dot P, the momentum is star is m1, oh, I need the velocity, I did it. Let's do it, okay. Star one is gonna be, let's say that one's moving in the positive y direction, so it's gonna be m1 times vector zero v1 zero. Star two dot p is gonna be m2 times vector zero negative v2 zero, because that one has to be moving in the opposite direction. Okay, so now I can update the momentum so I'm using a numerical model. I should have, I should have written this out uh, just in case. Let me just switch over here real quick. Uh, just in case you haven't seen this before, it won't take a second uh, to show you what we're doing. We, meaning me. If you haven't done a numerical model before, uh, I have the following is the momentum principle. F net is delta P over delta T, where P is momentum m times v. Okay, so if I take a short time interval and I, I just have that one force, but let's call that f net, that's going to be equal to p2 minus p1 over delta t. So this is the momentum at the beginning of the time interval. That's the momentum at the end of the time interval. I can solve this for p2 and I get p2 equals p1 plus f net delta t. So this is not true in our case because as the thing orbits, even if it stays the same distance as a circular orbit, the direction of F gravitational force changes. But if dt is small, like a thousand seconds, then it's close enough to being true. And I can use this to find the momentum at the end of the time interval. Now, if I call r2 the vector uh, r, this is called, mm, let's just call, um, R, I guess, let's call it the, let's define the uh, average velocity, uh, V average, as P over M, right? That's the opposite of the momentum principle. And that's gonna be delta R, this is for mass one, R1 over delta T, which is delta R1, I'm sorry, which is R1 final minus R1 initial, I'm using those double indices right there, divided by delta T. I can solve this for R12. R12, arg, I put it up here. R12 equals R11 plus P2 over M delta T. So what I did here is instead of using the average velocity and the average momentum, I'm gonna use the momentum at the end of the time interval to find the new position. So I'm gonna take the position at the beginning of the time interval, the momentum I just calculated at the end of the time interval and find the new position. And then I can just go back up here and do the whole thing. I have to do it again because now my gravitational force will change. So I have to calculate the gravitational force, update momentum, update position, and repeat. Okay, so let's do that. So I have already calculated the force and this is in the loop. So every time I get to the beginning of the loop again, it's gonna, I have to recalculate R, I have to recalculate F. But now I can update the momentum and this is on star two. So I'm gonna update the momentum of star two star two dot p equals star two dot p plus 
f times dt. So in this case, I'm not using indices because this is uh, a make equal to sign. It's not an equal sign. It says take the momentum, add f to t, and then make that the new momentum. Now I need to do the same thing for star one. Star one dot p equals star one dot p minus f times dt. Because if star one pulls on, on star two with the force f, then star one pulls on star Star two pulls and star one with the force negative f. Remember, there's an equal and opposite force between those two things. Now I need to update the positions. Star one, it doesn't matter which one I do, pos is the position, equals star one dot pos plus star one dot p times dt divided by m1. I, I should normally do m1, you know, star one dot m, but I didn't do that. Uh, star 2 dot pos equals star 2 dot pos plus star 2 dot p times dt divided by m1 m2 now i need to do one more thing and that's update time right so i need to say t equals t plus dt if i don't do that this will run forever right because i have a while loop depending on the time okay so what are the chances this works um I don't know. Let's just do it. No, it didn't work. So this exploded. Um, means I got things backwards. Ah, that's why. I did get this backwards. So I said star 2, R is from 1 to 2. So that's right. So it's from 1 to 2. 1. Why did it blow up? What did I do wrong here? Um, R is star two, F one. Oh, ah, this is squared. I think this is, let's see, it's R is from one to two. Then the force on, on two is negative. I got these backwards. That's right. I got that backwards. Oh, it's <laughs> I still got it backwards. I did. I think I undid backwards twice. Okay, now it's working. Uh, so now let's just run this for uh, ten to the sixth. That's winning. Okay, and that didn't do a full circle. Let's do uh, eight times ten to the sixth. Awesome. Now let's just let's just do something crazy here. Uh, let's make the mass of star one like giant. Okay, uh, and let's see what happens. Um, well, let's do two things. Let's take mass one uh, times. Let's do this nine, and let's do this one as. Uh, point 0.1. So it, it's just much more massive. And so now you can see this is really nice. You can see that star uh, wobbling there. But I'm pretty happy. Um, now I can use this code. I can change the masses and I can make my Lagrange points and model those. And it's going to be a, so much fun. I'm really looking forward to it. I'll make some more videos. I promise you that I will. Uh, but I'll give you the code to this down below. And it's gonna, I'm going to put this in my little group of Lagrange uh, point video playlist and hopefully I'll finish it but you never know how things go so later